Represent Representative Sensenmuir will move that House File 489 be laid over possible exclusion. Welcome to the committee, Representative Sensenmuir. Thank you. And is it my first time presenting a committee ever on cupcakes? I don't know how oh. to feel about cupcakes. You know, you know what to do. Some of them have lost their frosting. You feel appreciative. I don't like frosting, so that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> Good for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Representative Sensenmuir, you may proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Zhang. Um, thank you, committee members. Uh, happy to be here today and really um, honored to be introducing House File 489 to the committee today. Um, this bill is about bringing people back into our community and making sure that they are successful when they come back. Better Futures provides job skills training for recently incarcerated people, people who were released from prison in the last 12 months for felony level offenses. They work with 100 men per year, and this bill will require that Better Futures report their results from this grant each year to deed, including information on the number of participants, employment outcomes, um, you know, outcomes related to homelessness and recidivism. Men working with Better Futures represent those who face the most barriers to getting employment and keeping employment. And Better Futures addresses both of these issues. Better Futures gives their participants 12 certification, many of which represent career paths in sustainability, such as deconstruction. Um, and they also give their participants real support services, whether it's rent support, whether it's transportation support, um, all of those things to help make sure that people can be successful in their jobs. I would invite all committee members to come and visit their space, which is in my home district in South Minneapolis, not too far away. Um, I got a chance to visit last week, um, and I was you know, blown away both by just kind of the support that they um, give their participants, but also um, just the really important work that they are doing in our community, um, really around sustainability and deconstruction. So they are going into houses, they are helping deconstruct them, they are helping to get rid of materials that would otherwise, you know, just be thrown away. They are contracting with cities to do help with recycling, um, and so they are providing really vital services for our community. This bill is about giving people second chances, and it's also about making sure that participants are prepared for jobs for the future. Um, and I just want to note that, you know, this organization only serves men with felonies. Um, the average participant they work with um, has three felon felonies. Um, and so for that population, the average recidivism rate is 65%. Um, Better Futures has shown real impact, real results. Their recidivism rate is 5%. So um, the typical, I wanted to repeat that, typical recidivism rate is 65%, and the participants from Better Futures have a 5% recidivism rate. Um, you know, so they have gotten funding from the state before, um, and I just kind of want to break down, you know, that funding. So they work with 100 men per year in the past. The state has um, invested about 1,500 per participant that they work with, and that has been a huge return on investment. Um, so when we think about, you know, this is helping to keep people in the community, keep people out of our prison system, helping to generate tax revenue, helping to generate child support payments, um, you know, supporting and ensuring that we don't have county costs regarding rehabilitation. Um, I think this is a great program. I think it's, you know, the right thing to fund. It's also a huge return on investment. Um, and with that, I would like to yield the rest of my time to um, the amazing testifiers that I have here today who can tell you more. Thank you. Welcome to committee. Please identify yourself for the record and proceed. Uh, thank you, Chair, committee members, PJ Hubbard, representing Better Futures Minnesota. Better Futures Minnesota embraces a population of men who are locked out of society, living in chronic poverty, with histories of incarceration, persistent unemployment, untreated mental illness, addiction, and homelessness. Our workforce development social enterprise provides 12 trainings and certifications on the job training and employment for men that we serve coming directly out of incarceration. Most of our men have little to no work experience, and for some, employment with Better Futures Minnesota is their first full-time job. As convicted felons, they are often locked out of employment opportunities. Better Futures Minnesota is focused on breaking down barriers to employment through intensive trainings, on-the-job training, 
job placement, and support services. Our support services include, but are not limited to, housing support to reduce homelessness and increase stabilization, transportation support to reduce barriers to gainful employment, mental health support to address long-term trauma, chemical health support to address long-term addiction, birth certificate and state identification support, and on and on and on. In 2021, 106 men completed approximately 29,000 on-the-job training hours in our business lines, and we ended the year with a 5% recidivism rate. Chair, committee members, we welcome you out to Better Futures, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today, and I'm extremely proud of Tino Jones, who is aside, beside me to share his personal testimony. Mr. Jones, welcome to the committee. Please identify yourself for the record and proceed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, committee. My name is Tino Jones, and I came to Better Futures in 2018, and I was lost looking for structure and Better Futures provided that for me. I came in starting off as a participant. I ended up being crew chief in training, crew chief, supervisor, assistant manager, and now I manage two departments uh, in the warehouse at Better Futures, appliances and sales. So <clears throat> also, oh, I'm sorry, also I'm happily married now. I uh, even own a home. So I would like to say thank you to Better Futures, and without Better Futures, I don't believe I'll be sitting right here with you all. And since I've been here, I haven't had any contact with law enforcement. Thank you. Discussion. <laughs> I just want to, so can I add one thing? <laughs> um, so when I got to uh, visit Better Futures, um, I saw Tino give that same kind of testimony at the same time that he was also, I think, breaking down a refrigerator, um, which was very <laughs> impressive. So just know that he has that skill. <laughs> Representative Frazier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative, for bringing this bill. You know, I, I often say that uh, accountability has its place uh, in our in our society and in our system. Um, but when we take people out of the community and then when we decide it's safe for them to be back in the community, we should provide pathways and runways for them to land safely and um, to be productive and provide them with the skills they need so that they can stay in the community in a productive way. And I think this program does just that. So thank you for bringing this bill, and I look forward to supporting it, um, and I hope we can see more of it just like this. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Baker. Uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you again. I, this is one of those I want to head over to Minnehaha, Minnehaha Avenue and take a tour as well with a number of members here. Um, I think this work you're doing is really important to help, again, in your area, mostly men coming out of incarceration. I think these folks need uh, uh, really a strong um, um, help to get the jobs they needed. We also need to do a better job helping employers be better employers for folks that are trying to get back on their feet. They, they might stumble a little bit. I'm trying to help employers be better with people in substance use disorder. They're trying to understand how do we do this better? How can we be more supportive? And, un, and a lot of times we don't take the time to slow that down. So I really want to hear your model, see it. I support what you're doing today. Thank you for bringing this forward. I think this is a good organization. And Tino, I'd like you to give me the tour when we head over that way. And again, I think others should do the same thing because I'm looking forward to seeing your excitement right in the, right in the plant as well. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, I will. Closing remarks are Representative Sensamira. Yeah, thank you. And I think just to um, uh, lead Baker's point, you know, I know that one of the things that Better Futures told me about is also just the way that they can continue to work with employers, right? So that if an employer has a Better Futures um, employee, um, that the employee can reach out to the folks at Better Futures, that they can kind of, you know, that mentorship and that support um, continues. Um, and I just, you know, want to agree with the comments of Representative Frazier, you know, accountability does have a place, um, but we also need to make sure that we're meeting accountability with support, you know, and these are people that have done their time, they're coming back into the community, and, and the community is better when they are successful. Um, and so I think Better Futures with kind of the multiple services that they provide, um, the model that they provide, you know, the way that they are um, preparing folks for the jobs of the future, I think they do a great job of doing that. Um, so I look forward to continued conversations about this bill. Thank you, committee. Thank you, Representative Senator Miller, for carrying this bill. And gentlemen, thank you for all the work you're doing. Representative Senator uh, Muir will renew her motion to House File 
489 be laid over for possible inclusion 